So here we are back at the Blowfish. And you can see I've cut a slot for the center board. We would call this a center case. Um, and I've rounded off the edges and fiberglassed around down inside for about 20 millimeters. Um, and this is awkward fiberglassing. You remember in the last video we did, we talked about how to fiberglass this stuff with some resin, how to lay that up on a flat surface. That's easy work. Getting fiberglass to go around places like this is not, or not as easy. And if you look here, you can see I've buggered it up. There's a great big bubble here. And in fact, when I look inside, I can see bubble along the edge on the inside too. So we're gonna to have to fix this and do it again. I'm a little bit surprised at um, this has happened because before I did this, I did a little bit of video where I fiberglassed around the end of six millimeter MDF as like a test to see just how, how well 250 gram, gra 250 gram woven fiberglass would go around a curve. Um, six millimeter MDF is going to give us a three millimeter radius we round the top of it off, um, and it went round that quite well. This radius is more than three millimetres, so I'm not sure how I stuffed this up. Anyway, today we're going to uh, sand this faulty bit of fiberglass off because the only way you can um, the only way you can rectify this is to basically get it off and start again. And we'll talk about a few ways that you can fiberglass. Um, awkward awkward places tight corners vertical surfaces um, just how to make that job a little easier and hopefully not stuff it up like this so before you fiberglass or indeed paint or glue anything you need to prepare the surface so once again i got going with the sandpaper and um, basically the fillets on the inside and obviously Fiberglassing the inside is going to be a way more awkward than just the other side. All we had to do is turn the boat upside down before, drape some cloth over it, make sure there was an overlap between panels, and start mixing and, and pouring res resin and wet redding, wetting it out. Why is that hard to say? Anyway, so I'm here with um, a cork sanding block, which I actually sanded into a curve that fits the fillet. And I'm going round and round all the internal filleting that I did with some 40 grit paper on the block and occasionally some 80 grit folded over just to make sure there's no lumps in the filleting where the filleting knife stopped or started or I missed a bit. It needs to be nice and smooth so the fiberglass will lay evenly over the fillet or the glue or whatever it is you've got that's holding the boat together. The filleting compound actually has a lot of thickso in it, more than I would use if I was making filler. Uh, so it actually takes quite a bit of sanding because um, it's harder than filler. Filler's not usually all that hard because you need to sand it. And who wants to make something that needs to be sanded hard? Anyway, then after that, you obviously have to vacuum everything up um, and get your surface as dust free as possible. When you're um, at this point in the job, you basically measure the areas that you need and you cut the cloth out to um, the sizes that you want and take a bit of care doing this. I like to make the cloth a little bit bigger so it has some overhang and that way I can fix it to whatever it is I'm, um, I'm fiberglassing. So I'm using a bit of tape here and in the end I thought that's a rubbish idea. So I just went and got some spring clamps. Um, um, so basically use the spring clamp to hold the cloth up. If you tried to like wet this out without holding the edge up, uh, you would end up making a mess. So get the cloth laid out properly before you make anything even slightly wet. Anyway, didn't bother showing the bottom. We've done that before. It's just the same as doing um, the other bottom, the bottom of the boat, as we did in the last video. What I did here on the vertical surface was I used a pot of resin and a brush to wet this out as much as I could and then went over it with a squeegee to smooth it out and to get that nice uniform, evenly transparent, um, translucent, uh, surface that shows that the resin has impregnated the glass properly and the glass is pushed hard up against the MDF. 
There's a little bubble in the corner here that I'm working on. Obviously, when you're working on the on a corner that's an inside corner, when you move the glass around with the squeegee, it tends to pull bubbles out of the corner. Anyway, then I finished off with a small brush to clean up any dribbles and things that were there, spread them around, and then once again, work our way into the corner. Okay, this is a router and it's got a bearing cutting tool on it, about a six millimeter cutting tool with a bearing on it. So all I have to do is stick it through this hole and uh, push the bearing up against the center case, which is already inside the boat. Um, and that will mean that I get this, the right size slot. Meep, 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 meep. Here's what it looked like on the other side. You can see the center case there and that's where the slot should be. Um, this photo was obviously taken before that, but anyway, meow, 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 meow. Why do routers sound Russian? I don't know. Anyway, I you keep doing this backwards and forwards, pushing the router in and out. You could cut this out with a jigsaw or something else, but you know, a router is a great tool for this particular job because you have a guide inside the bottom of the boat uh, that you can use and you end up with what looks like a very even looking slot. This slot is for the centerboard to go in because yachts will go sideways a lot of the time if you don't have some lateral resistance. And there it is. The next thing I did was put a bullnosing bit in the router to round the edge off. And you can see I've highlighted the shape of the, the cutting tool here. Um, and that will make a nice profile on the center case. A um, bit of sanding afterwards and we're ready to go. Now before you cut your, uh, before you cut, before you mix your resin, you always cut your glass out, measure your glass, make sure it's the right shape so that you don't have to be piddling around, fetching bits while you're working, doing the layout because that resin is a time bomb. It will go off um, the minute you start mixing it. So you wanna have everything ready to go before you add hardener to the resin. Anyway, you can see I'm just using a brush to work the resin into the cloth here. Um, and this was the bit I did before I got the bubble. And you'll see when I finished here, uh, there ain't no bubble. So the bubble popped up afterwards and that's like annoying. And I'm not sure why, because that radius I put on there should have been fine. I basically, before I did this, I did a test. I, here we are, sanding the bubble off. Um, basically, I thought, well, I'll just sand the whole lot off and redo the whole thing, I think. So basically, I get the sander here. This has got like a 40 grit disc on it. And we're just going to take all of that layer of fiberglass off. You can see the bubble has just popped away and there's like a little thing under the back of the sander there where, where the bubble, you know, the top of the bubble has been taken away, like a scab being picked a scab off. And it's just about as bad as a scab too. There it is there. Anyway, I sanded as much of the fiberglass away, pretty much down to the top of the MDF, even through the last layer of fiberglass on the bottom of the boat. And then I had to get onto the inside of the center case and do the same thing there. But obviously you can't fit a sander in there. So here is my bit of flat wood with some 80 grit sandpaper, used contact adhesive to stick the sandpaper on either side. These are really good sanding tools to make. Like if you're doing any sort of home handyman DIY stuff, like a stick with some sandpaper glued to it is a really, really useful tool for forming, sanding, cleaning, what have you. Anyway, I hammered away at this for quite a while and decided I wasn't getting anywhere fast enough. So I actually went and, um, not shown, uh, stuck some 40 grit paper to another stick of wood like this and hammered away at it with that. Um, basically, I want to like remove the bubble from the inside and then roughen the surface. Don't you love it when life throws a challenge at you? Like everything's going okay. You think, really good, humming a tune, things are working. And then you realize they're actually not working. And actually that they're not working at all. Not even a bit. Uh, that's sort of just what happened then. When I was sanding away at the center case, uh, because you know, the fiberglass had bubbles on the curve, which it shouldn't have had. Um, I noticed I would peeled a little bit much um, fiberglass off. I thought that's okay. Just cut it away a little bit and more peeled off. And interestingly, when it peeled off, it actually took the MDF with it. So it wasn't a case that the fiberglass wasn't bonded to the MDF because if that was the case, there would be no MDF stuck to the fiberglass. And there is. 
But it now means that down in here, and I'll use a little light to break it, you can see fiberglass on the top and no fiberglass on the bottom. So when I said, when I said we're going to talk about fiberglassing awkward places, we're going next level. So here we are mixing some resin and uh, spilling it on myself. Nice work, Andrew. Anyway, when I'm fiberglassing a really, really awkward place, I often wet the glass out on a sheet of plastic. This is just some Black Builders plastic, um, 200 micron polyethylene. Um, wet the glass out and then stick it on like a Band-Aid and then use um, a brush to like hold it in there. This is uh, my go-to if like the job I'm doing is particularly hard, hard to get to and very, very awkward. Normally, I will just glass the surface with bits of fiberglass and a brush, and we'll get to that later. But to re-glass the inside of the center case, this is how we're going to do it. Now, the center case is well supported at the top and the bottom. Um, so the inside sides of the center case really aren't structural. They just need to be well sealed from the water and the scuffing of the centerboard sliding up and down as you take it in and out. It's a, it's a removable part of the boat. And um, so this just has to seal the inside of the center case well and bind the top and the bottom together. So it's not as structural as a lot of the other fiberglass on the boat needs to be. So like I would with normal hard to get to fiberglassing, I'll paint some resin on the surface. And in this case, I'm like, you know, it's hard to get in there. So I decide to like get some resin in my hair and on my glasses. Um, and I look in there and I poke the brush around. I'm not sure that that's good. So I go around the other side and do a bit. Then I'm not sure. So I come back on this side and put a load more goop on the brush you can say like it's honey on a knife basically and just splodge it in there because i want this to be thoroughly saturated before i put the fiberglass on anyway and while i'm thinking about it i just paint some other stuff unnecessarily but anyway so goop the resin on be fairly generous in difficult spots because you don't want bubbles um over wetting is not good but under wetting is terrible so you would rather have too much resin on the job than not enough. I remember fiberglass will tend to float up in the resin and lose its structure, but a bubble is like a many, many times worse than that. So I'm being super generous. I got up and thought about walking off then, and then I came back and stuck some more in there. And I've pretty much done the same from the other side. The center case is 30 centimeters deep. So the, the length of the brush, if I go from both sides, I can just reach the middle. Anyway, then I got two bits of really stiff sailcloth, um, just some scraps, and I poked them through so they stuck out on this side and the bottom of the boat from the top of the boat. Somewhere there's another piece coming any minute now. Another piece. Here it is. Here it is. So I've got these two pieces and they're hanging out both sides of the center case because obviously getting the glass in over a sticky surface that's in there, man, that would just be a mission. Anyway, the center case is actually tapered too. So I've obviously worked from the narrow side to the, th to the wide side. This is the wide side at the bottom. I poke the glass in onto the bits of uh, uh, sailcloth. And then I, I actually don't use a roller for fiberglassing very often, but on this case I did. And I s taped a stick to it so I could reach the center of the center case. And I'm using the roller just to push that like fold of glass that was, you could see there down flat. So then I go around the other side, looking like an old man trudging around his workshop, and I pull the sailcloth through, and with it comes the fiberglass. Now, I need to remove the sailcloth from between the fiberglass and the MDF. So what I'm going to do is put two bits of uh, scrap timber on there, just some stuff I had laying around with some clips to hold it together, so that when I pull the sailcloth out, the fiberglass I hope, will stay put. So has everyone got their fingers crossed? It's very important. This is, you know, live TV is such a drama. Here we go. So as I pull the sailcloth out, you can see the, um, the probably just the weight of the clamps and the wood even, like stopped the fiberglass from going inside. 
So now I have a layer of fiberglass inside the center case, although it's all lumpy and not spread out very well. So now's the time to get in there with the roller and maybe a little bit of stretching around with my gloved hands to um, just get it to lay flat and push the glass into the resin. Basically, once again, I did this from the top and the bottom. And obviously, you know, I shouldn't have to say this, but whenever I'm doing any fiberglassing, I put some gloves on. If you don't, you get the stuff all over your tools, all over your clothes, like anything you touch. Um, and like you find it in all sorts of places. You don't realize where you put your hands without thinking about it. Um, so, which is, you know, COVID times, wash your hands always. But yeah, fiberglassing times, keep your hands clean because you'll just inadvertently spread fiberglass resin over everything in your workshop. These boxes of gloves are like not expensive. You get like a hundred gloves, maybe 50 pairs, and they really good. Anyway, here's what finished. There's a little pale strip there, which is a pile of resin I put in. I should have filled that, it was like a little little gap, but I should have filled it first. It's not actually a bubble. It's just um, where I like filled up a hollow with some resin and then put the glass over the top of it. Not a good practice, but my patience was running out. So cut me some slack. Anyway, if I'm fiberglassing an awkward corner, which is where this video was meant to start, um, I would do it this way. I would put a bit of resin on first with a paintbrush and then lay the glass on top. This is that bit of six mil MDF and this is me testing, will the MDF go over, will the fiberglass go around a six mil corner in MDF? Now I expected this to wet out okay, but when I came back the next day, there would be a bubble on one side or the other where the glass had like relaxed and tried to go straight and, and like pulled away from the MDF and there would be a bubble like we saw on the center case. And this was not the case. Anyway, this was a test piece. So I did one like you were looking at here with the fiberglass strands running at 90 degrees to the edge. And then I did this one and you can see I've cut this bit of fiberglass at 45 degrees. If you have a tight corner to get fiberglass to go around, cutting your fiberglass at 45 degrees is a really good way of making the fibers go around a tight corner. It turned out not to be necessary for this because the other bit worked fine, even though the bit on the center case didn't. Um, but if you look at the fibers in this bit of cloth here, you'll find they go across that edge at 45 degrees, which like is about one and a half times less curvy they have to be. So if they relax after you've walked away, um, there's less tension on them so that they'll go around the curve more easily. If you're doing this in a place where you require some structure, you would put some more fiberglass on because the fibers are not running in that particular direction, they're not going to be as strong. So you made it to the end of the video. It was a long one, I'm sorry about that, but my incompetence got in the way. Anyway, you'll notice I'm sitting here with our game collection and two videos ago, two videos, I promised that there would be some chatter about a little sailing game I'm working on. And as this video is already a bit long, I'm not going to say too much about it other than a bit of development work. Worked out that it doesn't work, but it will work. There's a game there somewhere. Anyway, thanks for being here all the way to the end. Uh, please subscribe, share with your friends, make a comment below on something you didn't like about this video because it's the internet. It's full of people not liking other people's stuff. Am I right?